Welcome back, guys. In today's video, I'm going to be highlighting some of the main points I wanted you guys to get from my video that was titled Story Time, My Biggest Loss. And it was my biggest loss that I've taken in my watch collecting journey. It was a story time where it wasn't for you guys to feel bad for me or feel sad or anything like that. The main points of my videos are to educate and to entertain. So I'm over it. I'm over it already. It's all done, happened, and I'm good. So I'm just telling you guys my story so you guys can learn from it and avoid making the same mistake. But guys, I'm working on my storytelling skills. So you guys may have skipped around in that video and might have missed some of the main points I wanted you guys to get so you guys could avoid making the same mistakes that I made in that scenario. So in today's video, I'm just going to briefly touch upon the points that I wanted you guys to get and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and let's get into it. So my first point was to inspect a timepiece. Fully look over a watch, guys. Regardless of if it's online, if it's online, request pictures, pictures of the movement, pictures of the case, pictures of the serial numbers, the papers, the box, everything. And if you're not knowledgeable on how things are supposed to look, take those pictures to a watchmaker and have him look it over and make sure that you're getting the right timepiece. Now my story time was of a timepiece I purchased on an online auction. But don't just take these points and apply just to online you know, purchases. In person, if you're buying from a private seller, make sure you do your DD and make sure you don't make a mistake. If you're buying from a dealer, hey, guys, it's a world where there's a lot of untrustworthy characters. And in this watch game, there are for sure some. So not everyone you can trust. So if you're gonna go buy a timepiece from a dealer that you may not trust too well, take someone that's well familiar with timepieces with you when you're gonna go buy the watch. Yes, some dealers, you know, of course you have a return policy, that's fine. You buy a timepiece, once you buy it, take it to a watchmaker, have it inspected. If it's not correct, return it. Hopefully the dealer takes the return and you'll be fine. But for sure, if it's a private sale, or an online auction, or just someone you don't trust, make sure you do your homework, do your due diligence to make sure you don't have a headache after making a purchase. The second point that I wanted you guys to get from that video where I don't think I verbally said it, but I put the text in the video, was that this auctioneer required a wire transfer as payment. Guys, please do not do a wire transfer to any business or person that you don't trust because to reverse a wire transfer is borderline impossible. It's possible, but it's hard to do. And the chances are the time has gone past where you could reverse the wire. So use your credit card if you're gonna make a payment at an online auction or in anything, especially large payments like that. Pay with your credit card and just pay it off afterwards, pay it off that month. Do not wire the funds. That that's that, that was my biggest mistake. Because if I would have paid with a credit card, guys, I could have just stopped it. That would have been it. Even days after, I could have stopped it. So, whenever you're gonna make a sketchy purchase, <laughs> even if you don't know if it's sketchy, but a large purchase like that, a timepiece, pay with a credit card. You know, wiring the funds, you know, seems cool and all, but it's not if you end up in a situation like me where you buy a watch that wasn't fully authentic. And the last point I want you guys to get from that video is that I held myself accountable. Yes, the auctioneer, or let's say a person that you buy something from was sketchy or wanted to, you know, commit some type of fraud or scam you. Okay, that's that person. But in every situation where there's a bad outcome, a negative outcome, I always hold myself accountable and, and ask myself and look over the situation like, how could I have avoided this outcome? What could I have done? What could I have said to avoid this from happening? Guys, in, in life, in any scenario, in every situation, hold yourself accountable, whether you're trying to point fingers and blame someone else, okay, that's easy to do always have to look back and try to figure out how you yourself could have avoided uh, whatever outcome that happened that you didn't really want to happen. So accountability is always important. And if you do that, you'll definitely learn 
to not repeat the same mistakes. If you haven't seen the story time, guys, go check it out. Uh, it was a decent one. I tried to make it funny so you guys could actually enjoy it and watch from beginning to end. But um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. And guys, stay tuned for the next video.